Alton Jones has been shifted down to 16th place. He's looking for eight pounds and six ounces. And here we go. Get it. 13 pounds, seven ounces. Alton Jones claims the 48 pounds of the title on South Carolina It's the biggest tournament in the bass fishing world. Every Bass Pro dreams of winning it. And hundreds of anglers work all year long just to be a part of it. This is the story of one man's quest to earn his place in the 2009 Bassmaster Classic. Jason Quinn has fished on the Pro Tours for over seven years. He's earned over half a million dollars and fished in the Bassmaster Classic four times. But Quinn finished 47th in the 2007 standings, missing the Classic field by a handful of points. You know, not making the Classic this year was very frustrating. It, even though, you know, it, it's part of the business, it came down to one event that kept me from being in the Classic, and that was Florida. So some of my goals, you know, is, is to survive these first two tournaments, have two decent finishes, and, you know, you know, as long as I can get out of here with two decent finishes, you know, you still have a shot at Angler of the Year. And I feel like I'm going to have a real good season. I feel like I'm going to have probably the best season I've ever had. You know, if you can set your goals realistically to make, you know, four or five top 12s, that's, that's a pretty good goal. That's something that's definitely achievable. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Classic would be definitely a great title because that's kind of a, um, that pretty much sets you for the rest of your life, career-wise, um, with a Classic title. But I mean, still, it's, it's, it's one tournament that goes out for three days. And, you know, sometimes luck can play a big factor in that. And like I said, Angler of the Year, there's no luck in it. It's, it's consistency. You are the man for that year. The 2008 Elite schedule kicked off with two tournaments in Florida, on lakes where Quinn hasn't always caught a lot of fish. It's go time. Fish just hit the bait real funny today, and I had opportunity to get a real big bag of fish, but uh, hey, I'll take what I got. All right, man, congratulations. Hope it holds up for you. Jason Quinn out of South Carolina. 9-12 will get you to the top 25. Over the first two days, Quinn found the fish, enough to make the cut for Saturday. Saturday was a just unbelievable deal. Um, that was by far the hardest win that I've ever fished in, period. Um, there's no way I would have been out there, even, you know, just fun fishing or goofing off with some buddies or something. I wouldn't have been out there. That was how bad the wind was blowing. The water was, it looked like chocolate milk when I got to my fishing area. Here comes Jason Quinn out of South Carolina. Oh my goodness. That one might get blown off the scales right here. That's actually two fish in there. Are you kidding me? Oh boy. Let him hold both of them up. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Quinn with two fish that weigh one pound and 11 ounces. Oh my goodness. When you swing a fish like that in the boat on a day like today, does it just blow around like a kite? Flies like a kite. All right, man, we'll see you in a couple of days. Jason Quinn, a pound of 11 ounces on two fish. So those were two giants uh, by Eddie standards. But um, anyway, I ended up having a decent tournament. I did what I wanted to do. I wanted to get into Florida, have a top 50 finish, and that's what I accomplished. But the low point of the weekend wasn't going to be catching two fish that weighed less than two pounds. The low point came on Sunday. Well, once we get ready to leave the first event at the Harris Chain, we're headed to Lake Wales. And uh, the plan was to get over there early that morning to get everything unloaded, which is only an hour, a half, two hours down the road. And uh, get a little rest, do a little tackle prep, and um, 
just kind of relax and make sure everything's ready to go. And so we get everything loaded up once we get ready to pull out. I have no idea what's going on. So I actually get out of the vehicle and look and I'm stuck in the sand. These, most of these RV parks and everything in Florida are built on orange groves and it's nothing but very soft sand. So now I'm a foot deep in the sand, stuck with a 70,000 pound unit that it's not going anywhere. Aaron and his wife are staying behind us and uh, Todd Faircloth and Angie, they're staying over there also. And Aaron comes out, he sees what's happening. He said, well, you know, Faircloth's got this big new Ford F-350 truck here and they're going to breakfast. Uh, he left the keys, we'll just use his truck. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. We'll, we'll just hook up to it and try to pull it a little bit and see if, if that'll help. I'm sorry, but the Ford is not gonna move this 70,000 pound vehicle. And to this day, I don't know if Todd knows that we used his vehicle or not. So after we try that and try that, nothing, nothing, nothing. So I have to call a wrecker. So here comes the wrecker out there and the wrecker's got the bright idea of, you know, we'll just pull it from reverse. He tries and tries and tries and he has to call for backup. They bring two more out there, um, bigger tow trucks. You know, instead of one guy out there trying to do everything, they had three guys out there. You know, it takes them a while, but they kind of get it figured out. I think we can pull it through it. Uh, we're, we're about to fly. Are we? Yeah. Good. This could be good, I promise you. The tow truck tried to pull from back. Ain't happening. The head guy in charge showed up, and he told them right quick that they were doing it completely backwards. Uh, so they moved all the tow trucks up to the front of the Zephyr. They had one guy out there running the show and he got it done real quick. Seven hours later and three tow trucks. And that was a lesson learned. I will never park on sand again. That's the best show we've seen in quite a while. We got into Kissimmee a little bit later than what we anticipated, uh, but we still made things work. Put himself in top 10 contention right here. Nice, how about a hand for Jason Quinn? Curious if I ask what the what a, a unit like that would run you? Um, it's right around six hundred grand. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> all when you fish the pro bass tour, the road is just part of the lifestyle. When you're Jason Quinn, there's no shortage of style. So this is the Zephyr Travel System. It's eighty feet long. This is my home away from home. The front part of it's forty foot living quarters, and the back part is another forty foot that houses. It's like my garage. Come on in and check it out. You know, I don't have to worry about having anything. I've got, you know, washing machine, dryer. I mean, I've got in-motion satellite TV. Once you come in, you see we've got plenty of room. Um, you got the little bunk up here for the munchkins. That's for the kids to sleep up there. 
climb up there on a little ladder. But actually, two people could fit up there. I mean, it kind of goes in, but you just can't be claustrophobic or anything. You've got the couch here that also lets out to a bed. You've got a full, nice countertop. You've got the full sink. Full cooktop. I always got to have the microwave. So you got plenty of room in here. You got the fridge, big nice fridge for all your goodies. One of the neatest things is a shower. I've got a real nice shower. But also, when you're gone and you're home away from home, you've also got laundry that you have to do. And I've got the wash machine and dryer here also. So I can actually wash clothes going down the highway. So you know how I'm going from one place to the next, throw them in there, let them do the deal. So you've got clean, fresh clothes for the next event. This is where Mr. Quinn sleeps. You've got a nice bed, you've got your closet. You've got a separate satellite TV back here. Um, like I said, it's totally separate from the other three TVs. So you can watch anything you want to watch. Check out my ceiling fan, is that not ridiculous? Nice big blades. This is the house part, and the good thing about this unit is you got your house and your garage. The garage is the fun part. It houses all my fishing tackle, and also my truck and my boat both go inside there. Um, the boat goes here, and then the truck goes up here. But underneath this floor right here, this diamond plate lifts up, and I keep spare trolling motors, cases of oil, um, a lot of different tackle and stuff like that. You can never have enough fishing tackle, or you, you can never have too much. I'm going to start special crankbaits. These crankbaits are painted specifically for Lake Amistad. They're supposed to represent a tilapia. I've got a tackle store right here. That is not something that you can go to any store and just buy off the shelf. Those colors are local colors and they work really well down there. You've got rod and reel storage, which you always need rods and reels. Never have enough. There's always a party going on around the Zephyr. I mean, there's always plenty of people to come by, you know, People always want to come out and cook for you. Um, people like to just come out and hang out. One of the neat things about outside, you know, if you're sitting out here with the awning and you just want to kind of relax, watch a little TV, I've also got a bar built into it. My own personal Evan Williams bar, fully stocked. So it's kind of neat to hang out outside. You don't have to worry about finding a place to park at a hotel, unhooking your boat, uh, making sure your batteries get charged, making sure you lock everything up so it doesn't get stolen. But it's a real neat setup. Like I said, it's my home away from home. Um, like I said, that's the house up there and this is the garage back here. It takes me right around 30 minutes at the most to get my truck and boat loaded and unloaded. Here we are 26 hours later down the road in Texas. Way down in Texas. I actually don't think you get much further in Texas than where we're at right now. Tournament's gonna start tomorrow, so doing a little prep work, trying to get everything done. Um, fishing is just, it's phenomenal. Um, you know, that's what I said the first year we went to uh, Amistad, which is our next event. And um, this place, you know, I, I didn't feel like it, you know, it would, anything could rival Amistad, and this place is just unbelievable. These fish are hungry, they're mean, and they don't like us being here, that's for sure, because they want to kill everything you throw in the water. Even though Quinn carries a tackle shop's worth of gear around with him, it's never enough. So in every town, at every tournament stop, he hits the local stores to see what they've got. Every lake has got their local selection of stuff, and it's not something that you can run in any store and buy anywhere. You don't have any more of the smaller gold ones back there, do you? I don't. Okay. I will get 
I'll order something here in just a minute. Okay, fantastic. When I go into these places, for the local stuff, I mean, you can do all the reports online and try to see what works best. But once you go into these taco stores around these lakes, you can kind of get a feel for how they catch their fish and what they're using because there'll be, there'll be a little section of stuff that you don't see everywhere else. Um, it'll be a little bit pricier. And <laughs> the, uh, as soon as the guys see them, they buy everything they've got. $248.87. So I ended up buying a lot of stuff while I was there. A frustrating tournament at Amistad Reservoir in Del Rio, Texas, dropped Quinn five spots in the standings to 30th place. But the following weekend at Lake Fork offered him and many of the other pros a chance to take a break from the usual bass grind. The PAA tournament was actually a nice event. It's the Professional Anglers Association. It's our tournament. Um, it was hosted by Toyota. Uh, it's called the Texas Toyota Bass Classic. It was on Lake Fork. My team was myself, Ish Monroe, Yusuke Miyazaki, and Kurt Lytle. You and another guy fish the first four hours of the day. You each try to catch five fish. We have an official in the boat that weighs the fish and records it and calls it back into headquarters right then to verify it. Then once that four hour session is up, you head back to the dock. You have a strategy session with your afternoon group of guys that's gonna go out. So maybe that could help them in the afternoon to kind of bring the weights up. It's a real neat deal because it's one of the first times fishing that you can share information and know that other guys are not lying to you. Aha! Uh -huh. That's a nice one. That's a good one. Two days of practice brought plenty of big fish and a chance to catch up with friends and fellow bass pros like Todd Otten. I ain't seen no real big ones. I seen one about nine. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> no real big ones, just a nine pound. That's right. Big <laughs> <laughs> it's about beer 30 for us. After the first four tournaments, Quinn sat solidly inside the cut line for the Classic. Best of all, the tour was about to hit two stops in its backyard, Georgia's Clarks Hill Lake and South Carolina's Lake Murray. You always feel like it's a given that you're going to make the cut every tournament because that's just that's the way we are. We're very confident in it. Clarks Hill is definitely a place that I've got a lot of history on. This is one of those events that I plan on swinging for the fences for, and, and I did, you know, I went out the first day of the event. I knew it was gonna be kinda tough, but I didn't realize how tough it was gonna be. The big fish are biting first thing in the morning, and if you don't get to a spot in the first 10 minutes after, after light, then uh, yeah, it's just kinda tough to catch those. So I scrambled around and caught what I caught, but uh, I'll be one of the first boats out the morning, I'll catch them. Felt like I had the opportunity to catch a couple four to five pounders real quick, and go ahead and get those kicker fish, and then go scrape around for some better ones. And it just didn't work. Oh my God! Quinn. Let's see what Quinn's got for the day. A limit of five fish to add to his 12 pound day one. Seven, four. Yeah, you're in the thing right now in 13th place, but you're fishing like you want to have a big promo day tomorrow. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to get to anyway. You know, you try to sight fish them, you try to do everything to get them to bite, and it just, they just won't eat. They just sit there and look at you. I'll take what points I got here and then just keep my head up. The disappointment of missing the cut in Georgia was bad enough. Even worse was what happened the next morning. I wake up this morning at about 3.30 to make sure my alarm clock set on my phone and it wasn't set. So I'm sitting there setting my alarm clock and then I realize I'm like, well, I don't need to set my alarm. I'm not fishing tomorrow. You know? So I go back to bed at 6.30 I'm starting to hear the boats run up the lake at blast off. So then I'm wide awake after that and then I'm really mad that I'm sitting here. You know, coming up we've got another event in two weeks on another lake that I've got a lot of history on, Lake Murray over in Columbia, and it's going to be another event that I'm swinging for the fences on. How do you bounce back from this deal? You know, this is a good lake and it's got a lot of big fish in it. Today was one of the one of the most miserable days I've been on the water. Anything I've done just did not work out. Uh, had a lot of missed opportunities, but um, the lake's full of fish and you can go out there and catch 20, 25 pounds and you 
can turn it around real quick. But this is one of those days that I'm glad that I've got Evan Williams Bourbon as a sponsor because after a day like today, I need a bottle. <laughs> a bottle. Watch out for Jason Quinn. He won't be driving that rig later on this evening. Yesterday he went 413. Today he triples down. 15 pounds and two ounces on the day will move you to the top 20. 1915 over two days might leave you shy of the cut when it's all said and done, Jason. Quinn's all or nothing approach to these two tournaments didn't pay off, and he dropped 15 spots to 45th in the standings. He was on the outside of the Bassmaster Classic looking in. There's another one. There's a big, this is a giant. Look at that. Look. Ah. Look at that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> this place is phenomenal. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely. Stretching over 100 miles, Kentucky Lake straddles parts of both Kentucky and Tennessee. Absolutely ridiculous. And with the season at the halfway point, Quinn and fellow pros like Russ Lane started to think as much about making the cut as they did about where the fish were. Unbelievable. I wonder where it's going to take you to check. Oh. What? It didn't, it take, didn't it last time it took 25? Yeah, I think that's about what it was. pounds a day? Mm -hmm. It'll take, I imagine it'll probably take 26, 27 to check. Let's see. See ya. Popped so hard. Yep, we buy these by the cases at home. But after three solid days of practice, Quinn was feeling good about his chances. There's one. There's a, oh, she come off something. Ooh, another one got it. There's a good one. There's a real good one. A real good one. Oh, I told you. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful. Unbelievable. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about right there. It's a toad. We're going to win this mother. With just two tournaments left, Quinn had battled his way back from 45th in the standings to 28th, well inside the cut line to make the Bassmaster Classic field. The heat of summer provides a short break for pros like Quinn. With a month before the last two tournaments of the season, most anglers get some much-needed rest and time off. Instead of kicking back, hardware hit the road. This has been a kind of like the week from hell. Um, you know, it started off, I had to do a Costa Del Mar deal in Arkansas for the uh, college bass tournament that's going down there. And uh, those guys are very motivated. They come down, they're paired up in teams. Uh, they've spent a lot of practice time down there. You've got a lot of guys from up north. You've got guys from everywhere. And everybody's real excited. Uh, what do you know about fishing clear water, anything? <laughs> everybody's probably asking. Uh-huh. Anytime you get clear water, especially this time of year, top water's better this time of day than it is in the mornings. Really? A lot better. How's it going, man? Doing all right? Good. Good. Logan Where are you Bless. from? Uh, nice Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. All right. So, hey, how are you doing? Right? Jason, nice to meet you. We, just, uh, we came from a little ways away. Yeah, shall be. But a little different weather down here, man. We ain't used to 100 degrees. Holy cow. This is something that I didn't have when I was growing up. You know, if we would have had something like this when I was growing up, I might have went to school. He actually makes money catching fish. How about that? So, fly back in. 
uh, Tuesday afternoon from Arkansas. Go immediately from the airport, drive straight to Barstown, Kentucky. Craig Beam, a distant relative of Jim, is the master distiller at Heaven Hill Distilleries. He gave us a quick tour of the rick houses where the bourbon is aged. We've got about 20,000 barrels of different H uh, whiskey in here being stored. We actually got a taste of straight out of a barrel, which was about 140 proof, so that was kind of really exciting. Let's see what you think about that. How old is this? 10 years old. 10? Good. It's real good. Yeah. It was time to get a haircut. I always like to get a trim. Nicole's mom is a beautician. So she always comes over and gives me a little trim. Well, she got back there and she said, what do you want to do to it this year? And I said, well, it doesn't matter. Whatever makes you happy. I said, just make it kind of look good. She said, this is going to look better than anything you've ever had done. So she cut my hair off. She actually sent my mom and dad some of my hair. I've had long hair for probably 15 years or more. Everybody says I look a lot younger. So actually the restaurants that we've been in for the last four or five nights, I've been carted every time. So I guess I do look a little younger. <laughs> well, we just left Bardstown. We went and picked up the big rig from Evan Williams, and um, we're headed over to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, over to the Champion Boats plant. Quinn had to make a quick stop to drop off the big rig for the annual dealers meeting before hitting the road back to Lake Wiley. Fellow Bass Pro Britt Myers owns CS Motorsports. He and Quinn have been friends for years and Britt does all the customization on Jason's many vehicles. Where's he at? He's in the box. He's in the box. Now look, this is the first time you'll ever see this man doing anything, period. We do a little bit of everything from car stereo to suspension wheels, tires, and over here, come on over here, and I'll show you the, uh, this is our sound room. When you come in, you want to upgrade your tunes to your vehicle, this is where we're bringing in, show you all the subwoofers over there, all the uh, car stereos, navigation systems. I'm here six days a week when I'm not fishing. It's very rare that I'm not here. If the tournament ends on Saturday, if I can drive and make it here by our 8.15 Monday morning meeting, I'm here. You know, I'm a little tired. I've been on the road. I've covered about, probably about 12 states in the last couple of days, and it's all driving miles. So I'm a little wore out. Five days, ten states, over a thousand miles, and the road trip wasn't over yet. Quinn had one more stop to make, one that found him fishing in a completely different kind of tournament. Well, this is the PVA Bass Tour shirt, tournament shirt. This used to be my theme song that I came into every event. This is the way I live. And they just used my likeness and my worst facon. <laughs> made the shirt. So it's pretty awesome. You know? They put you in a wheelchair. They put me in a wheelchair. That's <laughs> pretty awesome, I think. Thanks for having me up here this year. This is the first time that I've been involved with the PBA. Um, Mr. Allen and Van Holder, they've been very instrumental in the whole concept of having me up here. But uh, also, we've got Todd Alton and uh, Matt Spore up here with us this week. Each year, the Paralyzed Veterans of America hold a series of bass tournaments around the country. Over 100,000 veterans live with some form of spinal cord injury or disease. The PVA Bass Tour gives them a chance to get out and hit the water. I really didn't know what to expect when I was up there with the PVA soldiers. I mean, I've never been around this group of guys, but I know that they share the same passion that I do. And um, once I got there, and when I seen these guys are about, you know, you, you sit there and you think, you know, here I am, I fish for a living. Um, this is what I do, and they're over there supporting me, and they're allowing me to, to do what I to do what I do to fish and pursue my dream in my career. Yes, Matt. Nice to meet you, Matt. Me and you fishing? Yeah. Yep. Fantastic. Jason and fellow pros Todd Otten and Matt Spar were paired with service men and women recently returned from tours in Iraq. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Angie. Angie. I'm Matt. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, Andy. Todd Otten. We fishing together? We are. All right. Good deal. Shake hands, guys. Oh, there you go. To actually see them get out there and fish, I mean, their passion for it. I mean, you had guys in wheelchairs and everything else come out, and to actually see them out there on the water fishing and actually catching fish, and you know, it was it was a real treat to see that.
Matt doesn't fish a whole lot, and he's been over there supporting our country and taking care of us while I've had the luxury to be over here fishing all the time. So I felt it was like my duty to go out there and show him exactly what to do and how to catch a few fish. Come on. There we go. All right. Got one. Bastard. Once I got him set up with the proper equipment, line, the rod and reel and everything, and showed him how to actually cast, um, he actually got to catch a few bass. Good job, man. All right. Thank you. It's, it's a great thing that these guys can really, you know, get out there and get the chance to go fishing and, and just take everything off their minds. Kind of skinny, like me. Let me get off my ass here. <laughs> it's my job. It's what I do. That's five. Little guy, Woo! but it'll work. I'm catching them. <laughs> Hopefully they're not catching anything. Hopefully we're catching everything. You know, I think it means a lot for events like this for our veterans and our soldiers because it gives them the opportunity that they would otherwise never probably get. This is the best, uh, best thing I've had got to do in a long time. The Elite Pros coming out. We appreciate their support. Uh, Todd Alton and Matt Spar, we appreciate you guys. Todd and Andrew coming to the scales with five fish. Good looking bag of fish or a big hand on them one. If you tug on the fish, yeah. it was more. You tug on it? Yeah. If you feed it bullet weights, it weighs more too. Five fish. Five fish? Do we have five fish coming to scale? Guys, we're weighing those fish out. If you got three. The help they need is just, hey, take me out here, let me go fishing, and I'll do the rest. I mean, these guys are, you know, they're soldiers and and they're competitors too. I had a great time here, and uh, I was glad to come out here and support you guys, and, and you know, y'all the real heroes out here. All right, boat number 57, Matt all York. Day. Fishing with boat partner, Elite Pro, Jason Quinn. With all the disabilities these guys got, they don't let them get them down at, at any time. I mean, they're out there putting in 120% all the time. And it's really spectacular to sit back and just watch them go at it. 14.55. We'll check one of those for big fish. 4.06, good job, Jason. Thank you for coming out, brother. We appreciate your help. Matt, good job, man. Matt, good job, man. It was a really special time for me to get out and spend some time with the soldiers. And uh, I'd really like to go back and do a lot more events. I'd really like to get um, more involved in this program and, and get some more guys out there. Because these guys are out there doing us a great justice, and I'd like to return the favor. A brutal weekend on Lake Erie dropped Quinn from 28th to 38th place in the standings. He sat on the bubble going into the last tournament of the season at New York's Oneida Lake. Here we are at Lake Oneida. It was last year I, I really thought I had a shot to win this event. And uh, now all the pressure's on the line. Here we go, we're in 38th. We're one place out of the Classic. Uh, we're actually 16 points out. I'm looking at a top 40 finish. I'll make the Classic pretty easy. It's 40th or better, I'm in. Right now the nerves are a little tore up. They're a little sketchy because I know how tough the fishing is out here right now, but I know the caliber of guys out here and I can't let anything slip by me tomorrow. And uh, as long as I can capitalize on all my bites, I'll be good to go and we'll be back to the Classic.
Let's see Gwen bringing 7 11 to the scales here. Top 40 start for you. We got to get you up there. Quinn's uh, first day of this tournament considering how well he did out here last year and today nine pounds and 13 ounces a couple pounds better but unfortunately that's going to do you in here today Jason. That's it. You know this is the first tournament I fished all year that I fished a perfect tournament I caught actually everything that bit me but unfortunately they was just wasn't the right size. All right Jason we will see you uh, later on tonight. Let's go ahead and get your When all the points were counted, Quinn finished in 52nd place, well outside the classic cut line. It was a disappointing end to a difficult season. You know, yesterday before I blasted off, I knew I had to have about 14 pounds. I needed to make that top 50 cut, and the only realistic way to do that was to catch some really big smallmouth that wasn't biting or catch a few good largemouth. Every day of the tournament, it took me about 30 minutes to catch a limit of smallmouth. And then I went and, and fished for largemouth the rest of the day, tried to catch a three or four pounder because I couldn't catch that in the smallmouth. And um, it just never worked out. Never got a good largemouth bite at all. Um, probably caught 25, 30 smallmouth a day. But the biggest smallmouth I caught all week was a three pounder. You got largemouth or smallmouth? Largemouth. Large yeah. All right. Have a good one. Good luck. On Saturday, with the top 50 still fishing, Quinn hit the water with his father to reflect on a tough year. You know, as soon as I made that last cast, it felt like the world had been lifted off my shoulders because you put so much stress on yourself to do real well, and you try to stay focused, and when things don't happen, it just don't happen. Like I said, I'm looking for a little bit of a vacation, but once I get home and, you know, spend three or four days there, I'm ready to go again. You know, as soon as I come off the stage yesterday, I'm already looking forward to the first tournament at Amistad, and um, it'll be prep time, and I'll have a good bit of the rest of the season to get all my prep stuff done for, for next year. There she is. Oh, look, look, big smallmouth, big smallmouth, big smallmouth. Good one. You know, out here on the road, you know, I'm on the road for probably about 300 days this year. So, you know, there's times when you get a little homesick. So, uh, you know, actually for this tournament here, my parents came in. It was very nice to see them because, you know, you have a bad day out on the water, but, you know, they kind of cheer you up when you come off the water. Nice one. Yeah, that's typical. That's the kind I couldn't catch during tournaments. When you're out here, you know, for 11 events, you're going to have some problems. You're going to have motor issues. You're going to have boat issues. You're going to have all kind of gear problems. And it's something that you try to avoid, but um, you make the best of what you got. If I were there today, and I'd have made the classic. I didn't make the classic, you know, that was, that's your, your dream, that's what you try to pursue all, all year long, that's, that's your goal, you want to make the classic. But you know, it didn't work out and um, we'll work hard on next season and we'll get things rolling and we'll be there again soon. There are no guarantees. There are no sure things. There is only the journey. Along the way, there are bound to be highs, and there are going to be lows. You always meet plenty of new friends, and there are always lots of old ones. This journey began on a cold Florida morning in March and ended on a cold Friday afternoon in August. 
end as winter turns to spring, the journey begins again. <laughs>